Hi everyone, um, welcome to today's webinar. Today uh, we're featuring and spotlighting uh, Fox Valley Technical College and we're about to start in just a few minutes. Um, just to remind everyone watching that this will go live so you will be able to ask any questions and we'll go over them at the end. But if you're not able to stick around the entire time, don't worry about it. This will be recorded and uploaded to YouTube and Facebook so you'll be able to catch the entire uh, webinar later on. Um, so without any further ado, Please welcome Erika Cuevas from Fox Valley Technical College. Hey, Erika, how are you doing? Hey, good, how are you, Alec? Good, good, with a bit of tooth pain, but other than that, we're great. So, how you been? Yeah, really, really good. I was um, just saying earlier that it's starting to become spring here, and so we're getting really excited to kind of start going outside a little bit more and doing some, some different activities now that winter's hopefully on the end, its way out. <laughs> So we might be able to talk about those activities in just a few minutes. So to start, Fox Valley Technical College. Now, one question that I personally wanted to ask, what does it actually mean to be a technical college? Yeah, so, so technical college really means that we focus primarily on um, an education model mm -hmm. that um, is more hands-on. So our programs are going to all have more of like a hands-on or a technical feel. Um, when it comes to to the coursework, um, it also means that we operate like a community college. So most of our programs are going to be about two years in in length. Um, but really, that that technical piece is that that hands on, and it it speaks to the the type of classes you take with us. So so it's basically kind of a community college, but the courses themselves would be a bit of the difference um, between one and the other. Right, right. So like um, at a technical college, you're not going to find like history majors or philosophy majors. They're really going to be focused more on those those more hands on programs. So think like engineering, nursing, culinary, um, those those types of degrees. OK, oh, that's good to know. Um, I know you guys are located in Wisconsin and you were mentioning uh, before about a few activities that you you will probably be doing in the on the weekend but just wanted to ask what's the environment like so what's it like for a student to get there what are some of the things that they can do over the weekend themselves yeah yeah so um our campus is located our primary campus is located in the city of appleton um and so it's part of what we call the fox cities which is why we're fox valley uh technical college and so we're right off of one of the main um lakes in the state and the fox river runs through the city and so there are a lot of like biking and hiking trails so if students like kind of nature and the outdoors they definitely have access to those things in the city um, but really we're like two minutes from the mall um, and also about 10 minutes from the airport. So if you're thinking about like, how do you get to, to kind of the middle of the United States? Um, there is an airport right in the city um, and it's not far from the campus. So it's pretty convenient to kind of get around. Um, and then our downtown area is really vibrant. So there's a lot of concerts that happen um, throughout the year that a lot of them are free. Um, so, so students can take public transportation and really get to those, those kinds of events um, so in the area. Okay, so there's really a lot of stuff students can do, not just the outdoors nature part, but also the regular go to the mall, go to a cafe, to a restaurant, to whatever. Yeah, absolutely. There's tons of shopping. So we have like our main mall, but then we also have in the downtown area, there's lots of like um, locally owned businesses that are kind of fun to see because you can kind of see what it's really like to to live in the Midwest or in Wisconsin if you're looking for different kinds of trinkets and things like that. You can really have a cool experience. Mm -hmm. But it's it's cold part of the year, not all of it. So it's more of a four four seasons kind of a place, right? Yep, absolutely. So so we do get winter. Um, like I said earlier, we're just kind of coming out of that. Um, and then spring and summer are beautiful times of the year. So definitely shorts, t-shirts weather um, in in the summer and early fall. Okay, nice. And now moving in a bit uh, to the to the campus itself. Can you talk about a little bit of how it's set up? Um, what can students expect once they're there? What's those first kind of few days that when a student first arrives? Yeah, so um, if you're thinking about like first coming to campus, we, we do a pretty intense or orientation um, for all of our students, just so you can kind of get acclimated to the style of education and, and the campus. 
um, all of our campuses are relatively small or at least feel small. So overall, we have about 45,000 students that are taking classes with us. So we're a large institution, um, but we're separated into multi campuses. And so you're really going to be studying with your cohort students. So like our engineering students are in the engineering wing with all of our engineering students. Um, so there's not really a ton of, of crossover when it comes to, to programming. So you're really going to experience one part of campus really intensely. Um, and that's a really great way to um, kind of get to know the students that are in the same program, whether they're starting out at the same time or they're, you know, a year ahead of you. You can kind of ask them questions about what it's like in, in the program and, and working through that. Um, the other thing that I would say with, with the way our campus is set up, um, the class sizes are still kept really small. I know that 45,000 students sounds like a lot of students, but really most of our classes are 12 students or less. Um, and that's really important for us to be able to connect, um, for our faculty to be able to connect with students. Um, and so we, we work really hard to maintain that, that type of, of environment. Um, so you won't find any large lecture halls on our campus. We don't, we don't have any of those. Um, it's all really kind of um, those small, small classes. Okay. Actually, it's interesting. The, the school I went to here in Cancun had a similar setup. So it was also, if you study this specific program, you're going to be in this part of campus. If you study this other one, and it does help. I do feel that it's interesting because those first year students get to meet the ones from the last year. And it's kind of that interaction of what do you feel as it's starting and, and then whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's pretty great. You guys also have um, other kinds of activities that students do, and uh, not just the, the regular program. Yeah, so we do have a pretty vibrant student life and student organization. Um, I will say, given, again, that kind of hands-on learning environment, most of our extracurriculars and co-curriculars are going to have a program focus to them. So the clubs and student organizations are really, a lot of them are going to be focused around um, your program and your major and really helping prepare students for their future careers. Um, so, so that's a lot of the, the extracurricular uh, activities that happen. And then within our student life, there's tons of um, excursions and different activities that, that go through there that are more social um, in nature. So if you're looking to kind of branch out a little bit, um, there's, there's just a lot. They do a lot of like kind of outings to different parts um, of the state. And also we're not that far from places like if you're familiar with Mall of America, um, they typically take take an excursion out out there, and you can check that out. Um, it's kind of a fun trip, um, and it's only I think it's a day trip that they take. So um, you can go out there in the morning and come back at, late at night, um, and just kind of experience what Minneapolis has to offer as well. So if I understand correctly, about like the the after programs are basically if you're engineering, you might be like robotics or something like that. Mm -hmm. so it's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there are still like, you know, we have like student government and things like that. So there are some like overarching um, organizations that kind of appeal to all majors, our International Student Club. Um, and there's some like other kind of multicultural student organizations that exist as well. Um, but yeah, most of the clubs are connected to a major or to a program. And speaking of international students, would you say that the school's um, like really diverse or would it be more of an of an, uh, you know, U U.S. school uh, experience for students? Yeah, so I would say we have a, a, a diverse student population, and that tends to be pretty common with, with community colleges just because of our, our focus. Yeah. But when it comes to, to international students specifically, I would say we're, we're more like a typical institution in that our international student population is relatively small compared to the rest of our student body. Okay. Um, if, if that's that's helpful. So you'll find like our local student diversity is pretty large. So you'll find like Hispanic Americans, African Americans and other minority groups that are taking classes with us, but might not identify specifically as international students. OK, yeah, no, I understand that complete difference because I <laughs> actually lived uh, in the States a while, but I'm dual citizen. So the same thing, I kind of count as Latin American, so from Mexico, but still don't, mm -hmm. so that, that, that makes complete sense. Yep. Um, so well balanced out, a good amount of you know students from the States, some that have been there for a while, and other brand new ones that came from completely other parts mm -hmm. of the world. Yeah. Awesome. 
Okay. Um, and moving on a bit of on the academic part, I know you mentioned that. So in general, the difference would be that the programs are more hands-on, but can you elaborate a bit more on how that is for you? Like someone watching right now might want to understand the difference between community, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, and uh, the technical part, but a bit um, after the, the general part of, yes, it's more hands-on, what does that exactly mean? Are they more practical stuff? Do they have better opportunities when it comes to work-related um, inquiries later on, or how would that be? Yeah, so I think a good example is like our, for example, our electrical engineering um, program. It's really a lab-based program where students are not really in a classroom environment. They're in a lab almost the entire program with the exception of a few classes. And they essentially have an instructor in that lab and they're working through a workbook and have to demonstrate that they're able to, to show or complete projects. So it's a more of a project based where you're not, so you're not necessarily sitting in a classroom kind of learning the theories and that happens, but the focus is really on those project outputs. So you're gonna have to be able to, to actually show that you understand this by creating something on um, our, um, we have a program within our transportation department where students actually have to build an engine and that's part of the class. So, so they're building out this engine, and the the final is is does it work, right? Can you actually use this engine, right? Um, and so that's where that that practical piece um, um, comes in into play. So it's actually doing the work itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it does make a big difference. So with our you know internship placements and all of that, every single one of our programs either requires it or highly encourages an internship placement. And I think that's another thing that's that's different um, with maybe your standard or typical community college or four-year institution where not all programs have an internship component. Pretty, every single one of our um, placements or programs has, has an internship um, piece that we, we really hope students take advantage of. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I do have a similar idea. I asked that because specifically here in Mexico, for example, it's not that common to hear about, but there are those options. So just to make sure people watching would understand completely. Um, mm -hmm. so just a curious question, what would be some of your most popular programs? Yeah, so our most popular programs are really, you know, business management is always popular with, with students, but um, electrical engineering um, and also our um, nursing programs are really popular with international students. Um, and then, I would say we have a lot of programs that do reach capacity. Um, so if students are interested in, um, for example, aircraft electronics is a really popular program. Anything with aviation is really popular. Um, but right now we're enrolling students um, for fall 2022. So if students are really interested in those types of programs. It's really important that they have conversations with you or you know with us at the institution to make sure that we're we're getting them in in the program and staying on track so that they're not losing that that educational time and it's the same thing um, our dental program super popular with a lot of students but right now it's about five years to get into the program okay. so it's it's one of those things that there's definitely place and we're one of i think the few dental programs that are open um, to, to international students, but that being said, the time to actually be able to start the program is really competitive. Um, so. What would be some recommendations you give to international students? Um, so for me, the, the biggest thing is kind of feeling comfortable or with who you are and knowing what, what, you're, what you're interested in. Um, in a program like ours, um, because we don't really have a lot of those general education requirements, um, I find that it's really important that international students ha have a deep interest in, in what they're studying and they're not necessarily picking a program because they think that it's gonna be a lucrative career or because so-and-so told me I should study in this. If you're not really passionate about what you're learning, you're gonna have a really hard time in your classes. Um, because of that, those hands-on lab environments and not having kind of those general education, um, it's going to make the class and coursework much harder for you. Um, so that would be my biggest recommendation is make sure you, you're interested in, in what you want to study. 
I think that's great advice because I did see a lot of people, just, you know, jump around from one career to the other, starting all the way from like medicine and then to law and then to, I think, marketing, something like that, the same person. So, you know, it's, it's okay to change your mind. But again, I think that what you're saying makes total sense to really, you know, take into consideration what you like, what you're good at, you know, practice, mm -hmm. ask. So I think that might be really, I think that's really good advice. Um, what I want to do right now uh, is to show everyone watching basically how to find um, Fox Valley on a Plyway. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to do that in a second. So, okay. Right now I am already at Fox Valley Technical College's uh, profile, but I'm going to walk us uh, to this to this part. So from the beginning. So heading back to the homepage of Apply Wave, we are going to click on the associates because as we mentioned at the beginning, the relationship between associates and technical, and then simply write out the name. So Fox Valley, it should come out here. Click search, and this will take you to the pre-profile of the of the school. Remember, you can create your own profile as a student, so just use your name and password, really simple to do. But once you're here, you'll be able to see the general information. Then you can click Read More, and this will take us again to the profile of the school as we were at the beginning. And it'll show us a general description. Pretty much everything you'll see here, we just talked about, um, except for the entire list of uh, programs that are actually at the school, and a good view of the ge geographic location, uh, gallery with pictures and videos, so here we can see a bit of the examples of what um, Eric was mentioning about hands-on completely um, and in labs for the school. And a few videos also talking about the school and what it's all about. So coming back to you, Erica. Erica, thank you so much for being with us today and giving us you know, all this information about your school. Um, I know we already mentioned recommendations, but any final things you'd like to mention to any possible international student watching that might be thinking about attending to Fox Valley? Yeah, I mean, I guess the big thing for me is to don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, there's a lot of people that are here to, to support your educational journey and really take advantage of that. Um, it's really important for you to try to collect and gather as, as much information as you can because going on to college or university um, is a huge investment for you and, and your family, and it's an investment for your life. Um, and so asking some of these upfront questions now um, can really save you a lot of time and money and energy down the road. Um, so, and if you don't know what to ask, there's a lot of people that can help you kind of, even with the basics of what some things you should consider as you're going through your, your college search. And so I would just recommend have conversations. It's so important. Okay. Well, now everyone watching, you know, you know, you guys know who you talk to if you start applying to Fox Valley. Um, again, Erica, thank you for your time today and, you know, for just the information about your score. And to everyone watching, thank you and we'll see you again next time. Bye. Awesome. Thanks.